Hi, and welcome to Concussion Talk Podcast. I'm Nick Mercer. This is episode 51. Concussion Talk Podcast is presented by Head Chick Health. Head Chick Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. Join organizations like the Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada, who rely on HeadCheck to improve communication and optimize care. Visit HeadCheckHealth.com for more. My guest today is Chloe Lockett. After a brain injury in 2016, Chloe took to yoga and became a Love Your Brain yoga instructor in Halifax, Nova Scotia. She is here to tell us about yoga, Love Your Brain, and her story. So thanks for the great introduction, Nick. Uh, I'm Chloe Luckett. So I am from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And yeah, I am an instructor of Love Your Brain Yoga right now and a very similar style yoga for ABI. And that's based out of uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia as well. And yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into okay. yoga. Yeah, yeah. So it's just how did you get, you, you, you were rendered in 2014? When were you It was uh, 2016. 16. Yeah, so in okay. 2016, in September, I had gone on my bicycle and was heading from North End Halifax to the downtown area and was hit by a car and was taken to the hospital immediately where they knew that I had uh, some type of head injury and I had broken my neck in a few spots. So I was immediately put Mm -hmm. into brain surgery and it turns out that I had several brain bleeds. So they, yeah, cut my head open and to relieve the pressure. And then I was put into an induced coma for about a week. And then from there I was in the intense care unit and was in the general hospital for a month where I learned to talk again. I learned to walk again, learned to have kind of conversations. They still weren't great and learned to swallow again and eat solid food. It took a really long time because all your basic functions go out the window. Yeah. Your your energy as yours just sounds a lot like mine. I was cycling. I was in on the other coast now, but I was cycling and I was in a induced coma for two weeks. And uh, I had learned to walk and talk and you know, I guess well, actually, I couldn't eat. Like you said, I couldn't eat. Swallow. I had to give it fat through my stomach for about a month, I guess. But or yeah, but it's the whole. To still be alive. Yeah. So you know, it's all. The whole experience is just. I mean, not that you probably don't remember it much of it at all or any of it, because I know I don't. I mean, around the coma. I don't no, not at all. I mean, do you remember the, that day? Do you remember the day of injury at all? I don't know. I don't remember uh, a week before my accident. Really? really? Which they told me. I asked them why that is. So I don't remember about a month after the injury, but I also don't remember the week before. And I asked them why that was. And apparently it takes about a week for things to go into your long-term memory. So I, yeah. So the whole week before is wiped out. I remember, uh, the more, I I was going to think I'll do is I do. I have thought forever until you just said that, that I remember the morning of my accident, my accident, I was, uh, I was, I was called because we always had a swim practice that morning. I was swimming at a lake in Victoria and, uh, I remember I got a call that morning from to let me know that my sim practice was canceled because there were forest fires okay. in, on Vancouver Island that year. It was a very dry mm-hmm. summer, and uh, and yeah, so I called. I was called to let me know that correct swim practice was canceled because the whole park, the whole area was on fire, and uh, I, I mean I remember that. I think I remember even the night before, even like there was a test in our in our master's program that we got back that I, that I, and I also earlier that week I believe I was 
I think it was that week yeah, they were downtown in Victoria because I was got a job in Ottawa, co-op job, co job for my public administration program. So I was going to be a do a work for the Auditor General's office in Ottawa, yeah. Auditor General's office in Ottawa, and uh, I was going on there to get a police, get a police check, gear, okay. RCMP background check, whatever. But uh, so I think I did that that week. I think, but I remember I remember clearly that there was a. Uh, there were four. I know there were forest fires. So that was, that's not exactly yeah. that's that's definitely there were forest fires and our spring practice was canceled. But I don't know if an office made this. Or just I was just told of this afterwards, and I just yeah, and that's magnet in my memory. It's yeah, it's hard to know sometimes whether things were actual memories or if they're merely created memories because yeah. of what people suggest to you. Hard to know. Yeah, and yeah. With that being said, too. That was a big thing in my recovery, especially when you're fresh out and in such a fragile state, you're very vulnerable. So the power of suggestion is so important. And that yeah. played a big part of my recovery is who you are surrounded by immediately after, you know, yeah. you're so, yeah, you're so easily suggestible if you yeah. are to be surrounded by negative people or people who coddle you and allow you to be dependent long after you maybe shouldn't be anymore, then I think it would be so easy to, yeah, that your recovery just wouldn't go as well as it might if you're yeah. surrounded by positive supporting people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always was, and I'm very confident that, I mean, everything I thought before was what is what happened. And even I, you know, I was doing a, a, a swim race, a three kilometer swim race, in the same area, the same like park as a swim was. I know that was on a that was on a Sunday. And I think mm-hmm. it was that week before. So I think it was like five days before in Bainty, I was I came and I did well in the in the swim three kilometer yeah. swim. But I I may have been the week before that. So, but uh, how did you know that you remembered everything from a week from a week? You remembered up to a week before and not you remember that week. How do you know that, that day? Wasn't that day and not and like we, you thought it was week before, but you know that you know that how can you differentiate between a week before and and the, uh, how well, you differentiate I know in a that week? The, the last memory I have, I know is a week before because I remember the memory is with someone oh, and okay. I was able to talk to them and be like, when was that? And uh, okay. yeah, it was a it was a week before. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, draw it back for one second and tell you a little bit more because that's not quite out of the clear with with the accident. Yeah. From the hospital, I was there for a month and then I was moved to the rehab where I spent another month. And after I left the rehab, I had to move home with my parents and yeah. that's when I started to get into yoga. So at the rehab... It's it's pretty unfortunate that you're not allowed to leave the building unless yeah. you have someone to come in and sign you out. And I understand why, because yeah. there's a lot of patients in there who don't have the right of mind to be able to take care of themselves if they leave. But it still is hard to be alone and bedridden and stuck yeah, with is. your own gracing thoughts all day long. And so I was really lucky that my family and my friends came in every day and took me out. We went for long walks. We went to lunch. You know, you play cards. You Uh, do everything. But, uh, yeah, yeah, once I moved home with my parents, I needed to find a new hobby. And I had been so active before, but I just physically wasn't able to anymore. And one of my friends who lived by my parents just suggested that I come try her yoga class and I did and it was the first type of exercise that I could do again and I was just like oh my god this feels good and you've and never then, done yoga before no I think maybe like one or two classes but you know to be honest I, I always kind of scoffed at it I didn't think yeah. it was intense enough for me yeah. and now that I am full into a practice now I am that's hilarious I know how intense it can be but, uh, yeah, I went all into yoga, dove in deep, and then I kind of started thinking, why doesn't yoga exist in a rehab setting? It was so, 
it was so helpful for me in my recovery. And it's such an approachable, inviting physical exercise that anyone can modify. And I was like, why wasn't this a thing in rehab? So many people are stuck with nothing to do. And I think that this should there. Yeah, there should be an option like this. And so Mm -hmm. that's when I kind of said, okay, I'm going to take my certification so that when I finish, I can start teaching yoga in rehabs or in a healthcare setting. And, then, and, that, and that's when you found, you found first Love Rain first or your brain, you know, so she contacted you first. Yeah, well, actually, it was uh, it was Leona. So we had both been aware of it and I'd already worked with her a little bit. And then not long after I finished my training, I got a call from her. Your regular teacher training. Yeah. I got a call from Leona and she was like, Hey, you know, love your brain, right? Like that's what you're, that's why you're taking your training. And I was like, yeah. "Yeah." And she was like, let's bring this to Halifax. I want you to teach it. (laughs) It was like amazing. Nice. So I was lucky enough that, uh, Bayans, that's brain injury, Nova Scotia and Lou Lemon sponsored me and sent me to Boston in the States where love your brain was hosting a training. And so I went there and took my training to bring it back to Halifax. And yeah, we arrived with it in April in 2019. And yeah, we're full force about it now. So it's you've going been really well. you going out since April of last year. So and how's, how's it going? How are people digging to it? It's, it's like the brain tree community or the rehab. It's just it's, asked you for three hours, the rehab center taking it. What's the question? Sorry. How's the rehab center approaching it? Like, do they just encourage people to go or do they say, or is there like a next step or? It's, uh, they're referring a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yep. So they, I'm under the impression that, you know, there is some, there is some fluidity in like communication between okay. the rehab That's and good. buy-in. And so I know that they're in contact about patients and I, yeah, I believe that, a few people that have been in the program are because it's been referred by the rehab or buy-ins um, is what, yeah, is what I believe. And people are, yeah, really, really enjoying it. I think it's, you know, it's bittersweet in a way that yeah. it's unfortunate. There's such a demand and great turnout of the program. Unfortunately, but there is. that mm-hmm. means there's a yeah. big audience of people suffering from yeah. brain injuries. But the great side is, is that it is such an effective therapeutic tool. I think it's really helping people. I think it's a great alternative to what has been a very conventional style of recovery and expectations. So it's really cool because it's also reaching out to a much younger audience. I think especially with uh, sports diagnosis being a a much newer thing with brain injuries. I think such a yeah, the audience is a lot younger than we thought. Who oh, yeah, I was going to ask that. The demographics of the of your of your classes, like your brain tree and your love your brain classes, how are, are those? How are, they, are those more young? Like you said, they're younger. Is there no social difference between those in your your classes? I would say it's actually it's probably thirty five percent. I would say under the age of 25. Wow. And then the rest is quite a large demographic anywhere from, yeah, up of 25 all the way to 70. Um, But it's just good to see the younger people doing something that's a rehab activity because, you know, when you're 18 or 20, you don't really want to go to a, old traditional style yeah like rehab talk circle where you don't have anything in common with the other people there yeah it's not that it doesn't affect everyone it's just that the whole point of rehab or rather i should say a big point of of rehab for brain injuries is about getting you back into a social situation do you find it a very do you find do you find it very social after after before class or like with their within the group around class yeah, I do. So uh, Love Your Brains, what the breakdown of each class looks like is we do a lot of breath work, a little bit of meditation to start the class just to kind of calm down your nervous system. 
and get ready for a practice. And then you do an actual yoga class and it's uh, modified movements and stuff. And then the last part of the session is a little community chat circle. So Love Your Brain's built on a few pillars, uh, different themes like resilience, community, a lot of stuff. So every chat at the end of each week is kind of revolves around one of those themes. And it's just great because it's the same people in the class for the whole six weeks. So they're sharing things with each other if they're comfortable and they're just getting to know each other over the six weeks. And that little chat at the end is just a super safe space for people to open up. And I uh, often find that after class, you know, someone has made a new friend or after the end of the series there, yeah, you have a new friend out of it and it's someone that you can be accountable with or you can check in or you can explore that new hobby that and you figured out. And understands it better what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. So you were, but you, so you taught yoga before you did have your brain training, right? As well. You I taught did, just, but... you taught, so what's the difference? Hey, what's the difference in classes between a regular yoga class and love your brain six week course or six week yoga? Yeah. You do so, a six week uh, since, is it? Yep. So a uh, commercial public yoga class. I mean, yes, there are different styles, but I feel like if you were to go to an all levels class, what is called an all levels class, yeah, it is still fast movement. It's a lot of up and down. It's a lot of yeah, heavy breathing. It's quick heart rate. It's a it's a workout basically. And it's holding very intense poses that challenge your balance. They challenge your core. They use a lot of muscles that many of us are like, oh, I don't think I have that. Uh, And then love your brain. The actual practice of it is if you take a regular yoga pose from a all levels class, you basically break it down into three movements rather than one. So instead of reaching up and then bending down to touch your toes in a love your brain class, you reach up and then you pause at halfway hip level so that you have time to adjust and you don't get dizzy. And then you move toward your toes and maybe you touch them. Maybe you don't. It's all about basically slowing down and breaking down the movements to take into account a lot of symptoms that go along with the brain injury like vertigo yeah. yeah, dizziness, headaches, uh, everything is, oh well, yeah, a little bit slower, a little bit more gentle, less intense, but also intense in a whole different yeah. way. Tense enough, yeah. yeah. So what, look, be kind of stepping back a bit, but what did you do? You said you're reactive version before your brain injury, brain injury. So what did you do before your brain injury? Were you a, a, like a soccer player or a rugby player or a cyclist or... What the, uh, was your sport or were you anything, just everything, just outdoorsy? Yeah, I mean, a bit of all those things. I did play soccer and rugby for hey, good guess. 10 years going through school. But then after I finished university, I stopped playing team sports just because life gets busy. Yeah. But then I became all about running, cycling, going to the gym, lifting weights, surfing more running and it was yeah it was just always you're never inside until you go to bed at the end of the night basically like is there is there anything that you missed that you used to do like is it like all that like rugby and working out and soccer and cycling and band doors but anything that you missed that you don't do anymore you can't do anymore uh i don't i mean I had stopped playing rugby and soccer before my injury. Okay, so I well, guess I, yeah, I guess that was my choice to yeah. end that. It wasn't yeah. because of the accident. Yeah. But everything else I still do still after do. the first, I don't know, it took about a year and a half to even get close to what my previous physical state was. But I'm probably more active now than I ever have been before. I, yeah, I go to the CrossFit gym where I also coach. I still cycle everywhere. I do, yeah, long haul bike trips. What's the, uh, 
Maybe, yeah. I guess surfing. I'm I'm a little scared now to do that because concussions are so rocks, common yeah. with it. And, right. and I just don't want to risk that. Yeah. So what did you find? What aspect of your physical recovery or even actually she's mentally, physical, psychological, what did you find was the most difficult part of your, of your own recovery? I think the probably. Or, you, know, you, don't, you don't need to pick one because I know it's <laughs> all of everything, everything, but I mean, yeah. what did you notice? What, what have you noticed the most? What, <laughs> Better question, I guess, is what do you know? What do you know is the most between yourself now and pre-injury? Uh, it would be two things that, yeah, are the only things that still really bother me: are memory and emotions. Yeah, yeah I have <laughs> the memory of a flea now. It's it's almost funny sometimes, and I feel like all my friends know so. Yeah. They, everyone is usually very patient with me, but yeah, if I don't write something down or if I don't put something in a book, it's just not going to happen. I, so do you always def- carry a notebook with you or yeah, uh, your iPhone or oh yeah? I, uh, I take both. So it's whatever I can put it in fastest basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Emotions. I like to think that before my injury, I was pretty easy breezy, you know, can roll with the punches even kill. And yeah, and now I just don't feel that way. I no. feel, yeah, very neurotic. Everything needs to be a certain way, and I feel like I get overwhelmed so quickly. As soon as something isn't according to plan, it just throws me for a loop, and I find it really hard to cope with something that's not that I didn't expect. I was going to say, is there anything that makes it worse, but it's just... The unexpected that makes it worse, or is there any like yeah. anything like when you're tired or when you're oh, definitely when you're that, nighttime yeah. or something like that. But you just you all of a sudden you get to realize that I just can't take this, I gotta scream, or I forget something, or whatever. I find what happens is when I get yeah, really tired, which you know, if you don't have a proper night's sleep or you don't feel yourself properly it's yeah it's gonna set you up for failure and i find that my response to my response to that isn't anger bursts or anything i instead find i get really flat and i almost have no emotion and i just stop caring about things and i'm yeah i just like don't care to engage i don't want to do anything i just get really apathetic and that's when I know that I took it too far and I did too much and that I just need to have one or two good nights rest and that I would like to think I'll be back to feeling my peppy self. And when stuff like that happens and you feel like a pile of garbage or you just don't feel much at all and yeah. and that's kind of unsettling, it's always good to, I find, just remind yourself too. Everything is only temporary. Nothing can last forever. So I always know that when I feel shitty, I'm like, it's not, yeah, I'm not going to feel like this forever. Yeah. Do you find, do you find that uh, your yoga itself or your yoga training that you've, you've taken, do you find any of that is helps you with when you're feeling, as you're feeling shitty or you're feeling, I don't know, angry or, or just whatever, you're feeling frustrated, I guess is by a good yeah. way to look at it, really. I definitely do. So the practice, I feel like of yeah, yoga is really good, and this applies to both a physical and emotional way. It's really great about being proactive. It basically makes you, or asks you, I should say, to kind of go inside yourself and just take a scan of everything that you're feeling, and it just makes you pay attention and check in with yourself, and that could be both physical, mentally, and emotionally. So you kind of just say, okay, how's this feeling today? How's this feeling? Because it's so easy to not be aware of how you're actually doing, and then you overdo it, and then you get in that slump. So yoga is really great because it asks you to take the check-in before yeah. you overdo it. And exactly. that has been so helpful. And it just, 
I feel like it helps to ground you. It makes the world feel like it's not going so fast. And it's, yeah, I think that's a really beautiful thing, whether you have a brain injury or not. You know, the world is just so check in yourself, yeah. Yeah. Just, just check in. Because do you do, it? do you do that every day? Do you make that habit? Is that one of your things you do every day? You just get up and assess yourself for, for a minute? Or yeah. do you just... I have a, a morning routine, and I will try to do it almost every single day, no matter how early I have to get up in the morning. Or, uh, yeah, no matter how early I have to do something, I'll always get up about an hour and a half before I have to leave the house. I make my coffee. I sit in front of the window and I read for 20 minutes and I just put my phone away. And you just have that quiet you time and you say, like, okay, how am I feeling before I even leave the house today? And that was never part of your routine before? No, I feel like you're just so on the go. As soon as you wake up, you just grab a cup of coffee on the go, you know, yeah. and then you're just, you're just out the door and you don't even know how you feel before yeah. you get in cold. But, okay. So but before I do, actually, uh, just, could you just describe what, if someone wants to, someone in Halifax or Nova Scotia goes to a love, love your rain yoga class or what are they, what are they called and where can they find you and what kind of class can they expect from Chloe Luckett teaching yoga? I would love to see them. So it's called Love Your Brain, and you sign up. The next series is actually starting in April. So you go on to loveyourbrain.com, and it doesn't matter where the series is that you want to attend. You go to loveyourbrain.com, and you click your area that you're located in, and you will see the next series. So Halifax is April. You sign up, and yeah, it's one class a week for six weeks, and the class itself looks like about 20 minutes of meditation. We have a 45 minutes of that very modified, gentle, slow practice, and then we have around half an hour of community-themed chats after where you get to know like-minded people and people who are going through the same stuff. And then by the end of it, you have hopefully met a couple good pals and, yeah, got some really special skills in yourself. Nice. That sounds, that sounds great. So where, where are you teaching at now? Like, where, you're, are, you te- are you teaching a session now or are you waiting until April? We're in the middle of a session right now. We're actually, we'll be halfway through this week coming up. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's located at shanti yoga on spring garden road in halifax and Which, I, I mean for assist- those of who don't know halifax that's downtown okay yes it i is. guess yeah okay yeah and my co-worker who's also certified right now is leading the session and i am assisting this session and then yeah so and what, then we so what do you, what do, you do to assist a session as opposed to lead it What's the noticeable uh, difference? Just The lead teacher is the one who speaks and does all yeah. the verbal cues for the class and actually leads the session. The assistant is basically a demo. So everything that the lead teacher is saying, if someone doesn't understand the pose, they can just look up to see what the assistant is doing and then just mirror that image. Okay. And but... yeah, assistant also helps to walk around adjust postures if if they're not correct or help figure out a pose that does work if something doesn't feel good for someone yeah they're just there as extra hands basically so actually that's the question i was going to ask you it was, uh, the people who go to these these uh, sessions are they all all new yogis or are they half and half or what do you think are they like is um, it is i would say it's probably 60% new or people who have maybe done yoga let's say w- once or twice before it's mm-hmm. but uh relatively new and then there's a small percentage who have done yoga a little bit more and then there's a even smaller percentage of people who practiced a lot before um oh, but yeah. it is so beneficial no matter what your level is and it's very approachable and doable it's designed that way that you don't have to have done yoga before to to be able to do it. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I I do yoga now. I do I do like the because you call it, you call it a commercial public yoga, but <laughs> I do I do that now. But I did it once a week, and it's, it's great. I mean, I've been doing that since 2016. I was late, late to the game, yoga, yoga game, because I was injured in 03. So I got to it late, but I mean, Pilates, yoga, swimming, being active, and just... It's Better just, late yeah, than never. Exactly. It's, it's great. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Chloe. And uh, I will talk to, talk to Leona, Leona tomorrow. About Perfect. what brain genomes goes you, or what bands, as you would say. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, how else, what else they're doing in the community, and, and how best to approach to where this is, uh, all this came from, and how it all said yeah. it came to be. So, uh, did you have any other any questions or anything else, anything else you wanted to say uh, about I your think yoga? So, or other than just a big thank you for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on, and, uh, I hope to get this podcast out soon. So thank you okay. so much, Chloe. Thanks. Bye, Nick. Bye. Thanks. Thank you again to Chloe for being an excellent guest. And please visit www.loveyourbrain.com to find out more about their yoga programs for brain injury. And please visit my website at www.concussiontalk.com. And follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Concussion Talk. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you listen again soon. As always, music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound. www.bensound.com